Hi guys, it's Cash. I have a very exciting project for you today. We're building this gorgeous Seattle inspired dollhouse kit with a few design changes. This kit is already pretty modern with a pool and huge windows, but I'm going to take it a step further. So don't be alarmed if I don't use all the pieces as they were intended. I'll also be using some additional materials which I always list in the info box below. And I'll also be changing a lot of paint colors. I hope you like it. First, I'll unbox this kit and show you what we're working with. There are two big bags filled with little pieces that we'll get to in just a bit. Then there's this little container which contains a music box a small bag of acrylic sheets, and all of these big pieces that make up the structure of the dollhouse. There is also all this paperwork. Let's take a closer look at the instruction booklet. It's beautifully printed in color, but unfortunately, it's not in English. The same goes for this printout of template designs, but I have a solution. I just use the Google Translate app on my phone and set the language from Chinese to English. Then click the camera icon, and it magically translates everything into English right before your eyes. This kit also contains these gorgeous sheets of colorful printouts for flooring, wallpaper, and a bunch of accessories. Now let's take a closer look at the two big Ziploc bags. As you can see, there are even more bags within this one filled with little wooden furniture pieces. The second bag has a little bathroom set, wires, greenery, a lighting kit, a bag filled with fabric and paper, and two little bags filled with beads. There is also this bag of acrylic sheets that we'll tear into during the dollhouse build. This is a big project, so let's jump right into it. Here are all the pieces for the structure of this house. We can set the smaller pieces aside for now and focus on the foundation. This huge piece is for the foundation of the house. The kit gives you this paper template that you can use for the hardwood floors and brick pavement, but we'll be making our own. To ensure that my floor is laid out accurately, I cut out the floor from the template and trace that shape onto the foundation. For the flooring, I'm using these wooden coffee stirrers. They're five and a half inches long and perfect for miniature hardware floors. Using wood glue, I laid the floor down plank by plank. This process takes a little while, but it's so worth it. You can also choose to stain this, but I like this natural light color, so I'm going to finish it off by sealing it with this polycrylic varnish. Before we create the stone pavement, let's get some walls up. Take the two big blue pieces and position them as the back and left side wall. The kit gives you this really pretty wallpaper, but I'm just going to paint them white for a clean look. Two layers of acrylic paint should give you really good coverage. Now it's time to glue the walls in place. Again, just using regular wood glue. This blue color is cute, but I want this dollhouse to have a neutral look. So I take some black and white acrylic paint and mix them up to create this light gray. Paint that all over the exterior walls. I did about three coats, and look how pretty that is. Looks just like concrete. Alright, time for the floor. Instead of the brick paper, I'll make a cobblestone pavement. First, paint the area you want to cover in stone with light taupe color paint. Then grab some paper egg cartons and simply cut them into little rectangles. Glue them onto the foundation mixing up small and big pieces. Then seal it. Paint it with a bunch of different colors. And add some grout. You can see this entire process in detail in a miniature stone tutorial. Apply some finishing details and seal it again. I love how realistic these stones look. Right above the ground floor is a half floor. Grab this ollie shaped piece with the rectangle cut out. The kit includes this tile template because this half floor contains a kitchen, but I'll stick to hardwood floors throughout this style house. It's the same process of gluing down coffee stirrers. You'll notice that I'm covering up this opening because there's actually no real purpose to it. It's the floor of the music room and the ceiling of the carport, so it should be sealed up. Seal the floor with varnish and paint the other side white. I'm only painting half of it because the other half will be hidden. You'll notice that there's a tiny hole on an unpainted half. Make sure to drill a hole through the coffee stirrers on the same spot. This half floor will go right underneath the window on the left wall. To hold that in place, you'll need this long piece with zigzags on both sides. you also need the three rectangular white pieces from bag A. Place the long piece right below the right side of the floor. Flip the whole area upside down and position the smallest piece in the back and the two other pieces around the closed up opening. The zigzags on this long piece are for two sets of stairs. Those pieces are all in bag A. I just dump the whole bag out and pick out the tiny steps. Separate the white pieces from the bare wood ones and then arrange the white pieces in size order. You'll notice I also picked out this little square dowel. Glue that to the bottom front corner of the cardboard. Now let's make the wide exterior steps and the narrow interior steps. Take two thirds of the white steps away from now. 
where the remaining pieces glue the steps into a staircase shape. Once you have that positioned into the narrow staircase area, use wood glue to hold it in place. For the wide exterior steps, take the bare wood pieces and form them into a staircase. I use the same gray paint we mixed for the exterior walls to cover up these steps. It gives them a concrete look, but you can also use the color printout for the look of Spanish steps. We're almost ready to glue this whole piece in place, but first, let's install the music box and a few lights. Take the little music box from its container and position it into the corner of the dollhouse. Install it by adding in the screws and attaching the handle. See this groove on the left wall? That's where the wires for our lighting will go. Take the bag with the light bulbs and a battery case. Besides those pieces, this bag also contains a tiny square of sandpaper and this long sticker. The kit uses two AAA batteries, so make sure you have those on hand. In this bag, there are seven of these little lights. Each one has a positive gray wire and a negative white one. Let me show you how this works. Simply connect negative to positive to light it up, gray to black, and red to white. As you can see, these bulbs give off a yellow light. I take one and mark the wire yellow. Then take the bag with the fabric. There are two other bulbs hidden in this bag. They're kept separate because they're not yellow. They're actually blue. We need those two blue lights and one yellow one for now. So let's connect them together. Take the gray wire from each bulb and connect the ends together. Do the same for the white wires. We'll be connecting red to white so mark those red and gray to black so mark those black. Light it up and look how pretty those lights are. There is also this long 55 inch extension wire because the bulb wires are pretty short. Cut out two 8 inch sections and remove the plastic coating from each end. Just run your knife across the plastic and pull it off to expose the wire. Connect one extension wire to the white bundle and one to the gray bundle. Cut off a piece of sticker and wrap it around the exposed wire. Now all you need to do is stick the ends through the hole next to the music box and run the lights through the groove on the wall. Finally, position the half full in place with some wood glue. To cover the exposed wire, I take a quarter inch wide coffee stir and cut out a three inch length. I wood glue to the sides and cover the wires. Then just add some white paint to camouflage the wood. There, that's perfect. Next, let's make a staircase to the second floor. Take the remaining small white rectangles and the two long zigzag pieces. For an industrial look, I'll paint these long pieces black. I also paint the steps brown. An easy trick to quickly paint all these steps is by putting some masking tape upside down and then sticking all these steps on top of the tape. Then you can quickly add a few layers of paint to each step. Once they're dry, just add them onto the black rails. The remaining white pieces are meant to go in between these open areas, but I'm going to skip that because I like this open look. Add some glue and position the stairs in the back corner right above the music box. Let's work on the kitchen next. Take the bag with all the small wooden pieces. Spill it out and pick out the kitchen pieces. Glue together the five yellow pieces with holes in the center to form the kitchen cabinets. Glue on the two remaining yellow rectangles for the sides. For a clean look, I'm going to paint all of this white. I decided to darken up the countertop with dark brown. One light coat is perfect to get the stained wood look. Next, take this color printout and cut out these designs. Glue them inside the cabinet to cover the holes. Don't forget the turkey in the oven. Before we glue the countertop to the cabinet, we also need to make the sink. Take these three tiny wood pieces and a metallic silver paper from the fabric bag. Glue the wood pieces to the back of the paper and cut them out. Then glue the pieces to the underside of the countertop with silver sides facing inward. Flip the countertop right side up and glue it to the cabinet. For the open sides, take the printed template and cut out these two shapes. Glue them to metallic paper and cut them out. Glue the small one to the bare side of the sink and big one over the opening. Flip that over and your sink is done. Well, not quite. We still need a faucet. Take bag letter C and pick out these three metal beads. Glue the back sides of these two beads together and place them on the counter behind the sink. It'll be the base of the faucet. Take the bag with the wires and pick out the thick gold wire. Snip off a half inch piece and a third of an inch piece. Use some pliers to bend the longer one to this curved shape. Then glue the shorter one right beside of it. Place this whole thing into the base. Glue the remaining bead to the top of that and the faucet is done. Place this kitchen set underneath the window. I cut another one and a quarter inch piece of gold wire and bend the ends in. 
Attach that above the oven as the handle. Next, let's make the dining set. For the table, assemble the legs using wood glue and add on the countertop. Super easy. See this hole in the center of the table? That's for the light of candlestick. The instructions show you how to make this very ornate candle holder, but I'm going to show you a very simple version. To make the candle, take a light bulb and some regular masking tape. Cut a half inch strip of tape and wrap it around the bulb several times. See how only the tip of the bulb sticks out? That's what you want. Then for the look of melted candle, I just squeeze a bit of hot glue to the top of it. Don't worry, the light will still work. For the candlestick, take these three pieces from the metal beads bag. Loop the wires through the beads one by one. Then run the wires through the hole in the dining table and glue the candlestick down. As promised, the candle lights up. To fit this table into the kitchen, first stick the wires through the hole in the floor. Then pull them out from the back of the dollhouse. We'll connect all these lights to the power box at the end. To finish the dining set, let's make the chairs. These are the three pieces you'll need to make one chair. The back, the seat, and the front legs. As you can see, the kit includes two chairs. The manual shows an upholstered dining chair, but I'm going to skip the padding and simply glue these wood pieces together. How cute is that? Build the other chair and then paint these seats white for a uniform look. Alright, let's move to the music room next. Take the blue sticks from bag A and a bag of acrylic sheets. As you see, the sticks come in four lengths. Form the sticks into this three-dimensional structure. Then just cover the blue with black paint. From the bag of acrylic sheets, you need these three pieces. The acrylic is covered in paper on one side and plastic film on the other, so just rip those off. Sorry for blinding you, they're super shiny. Add one sheet to each of the interior sides of the structure. Once you have that, just position it in front of the kitchen area right above the carport. As shown on the manual, this room is meant for the cello, so let's make that next. Take bag B and spill all the pieces out. The cello is made up of these brown and black pieces, so pick those out. Then cut out these images for the front and back of the cello. Add some glue and add your images. Then glue on the neck piece, the fingerboard, and the tail piece. For the bridge, I cut out a tiny piece of coffee stirrer and glue that above the tail piece. For the strings, take the silver thread from back C. It's super thin and very sparkly. Cut out 4 1 3 4 inch lengths. Add a drop of glue to one end to keep them together. Then place that underneath the scroll. Hold the strings down to the tail piece and glue it in place. For the tuner, take the black wire and snip off 4 tiny pieces. Glue them to the side of the scroll. Then take the four brown seed beads from back C, place them on the end of the wire. How cute is that? For the bow, cut off a 2 inch length from the black wire and a 1 3 4 inch length from thin gold wire. Curve one end using round nose pliers. Add a brown seed bead to the straight end and add the gold wire on top. For the cello, we also need this music stand which is made up of these four white pieces. Attach the sheet music holder, the leg, and the bass. You can keep this white, but I decided to paint it black. While that dries, let's make the sheet music. Cut out these images from a colored template sheet. Make sure to cut them into two sheet pieces. Stack them together, put the cover on, and fold it in half. Glue the folded area so you end up with this open book. Place down your music stand and it's done. So I thought about putting the cello in here as the instructions say, but I'm going to put a grand piano in there instead. These are all the pieces you need for the piano. You also need these images from the template sheet. Take the biggest piece and squeeze glue to the front of each side. Then add on these small pieces and then a long rectangle between them. Position the hollow shape right on top of that. This is really coming together. Cut out the long rectangle from the template and use it to close up the sides of the piano. Cut off any excess paper. Then take the thick white wire and snip off a one and a half inch segment. Glue that to the front right corner with some E6000 glue. Then just attach the three legs. The other big piece is the lid, but we won't add it just yet because I'm going to paint all these pieces black. I just use regular black acrylic paint and do two coats for even coverage. That looks pretty good. Now let's add the keyboard. Cut out the keyboard image from the template and glue it to the bare thin strip of wood. Make sure to fold over the edges. Then simply add a line of glue and slip the keyboard into place. Add the lid and the piano is done. This is optional, but I'm going to add some gloss with polyacrylic varnish. For the bench, you'll need these three pieces. Just like with the dining chairs, you can upholster the seat, but I'm going to take a shortcut and just glue the parts together. Add some black paint, and add some varnish to finish it off. How cute is this set? 
The music book is very similar to the cello one. Just cut all the sheets, stack them together, and then place them inside the cover. Add these pieces inside the glass music room. For the ceiling in this room, take the cardstock and cut out two of these shapes. Stack them together and position them between the walls. As you recall, we have two blue lights and one yellow light here. Fit the yellow one into the hole of the cardstock. It will act as the ceiling light for the music room. Use an E6000 to glue it in place. These two blue lights go right above and below the yellow light. Use the included sticker to tape the wires down. These blue lights will shine below the pool and give it a really cool effect. So let's make the pool next. You'll need these four blue rectangles and these images. You also need this sheet of clear plastic that's a bit hard to see on camera. Apply some glue on the blue pieces, spread it out, and apply the paper. Make sure to fold over the edges so the tile design covers the rim of the pool. Do that for these two side pieces and the back piece. We're going to turn this into an infinity pool so we won't need this front piece. Keep the paper design though. Assemble the back and sides together. Then slide the pool bottom image into place. Take the extra paper design and cut off the tile. Fold it in half and trim one side so that only a sliver remains. Attach this to the edge of the pool bottom so it acts as an overhang. It'll cover the empty area below the pool bottom. For the water, take the plastic sheet and cut out a 2.5 by 4.25 inch rectangle. Then score a line 3 fourths of an inch away from one of the shorter ends. Fold along the score line so you get this bracket shape. Make two dots on the top right corner away from the bend and punch those out. Slide this whole piece into place making sure the bend lines up with the sides of the pool. And see how the clear edge makes it look like an infinity pool? Okay, let's make the plastic look a bit more like water. Take some glossy Mod Podge and add streaks across the top and front edge. Add as much as you like because this stuff dries clear. Once it's fully dry, it adds this texture ripple effect to the water. Now just paint the blue exterior in gray to match the rest of the house. Paint a coffee stirrer gray too and add it to the front of the pool. Lastly, for the rails, grab the silver wire coated in clear plastic. Snip off a one and a quarter inch length and use pliers to bend it into this shape. Make two of these and snip off a two thirds of an inch length. Assemble them into this ladder shape and position it through the holes of the plastic to act as the steps. Now just position it above the music room and we're ready to add on the second floor. The second floor is this piece which is white on one side and bare wood on the other. The flooring is hardwood and tile because this floor houses the bedroom and the bathroom. But as usual, let's cover this completely in wood. Seal it with varnish and make sure to put back the hole we covered up. Then simply position that floor in place. As you see, it should be level with the rim of the pool and the top of the staircase. For support, take this long blue beam. Paint it gray to match the rest of the house. See this hole? That's for an outdoor light, so let's make that. Take a light bulb, this black wire, this foggy round bead, and two of these top hat looking beads. Slip the round bead over the light and glue it in place. Then slip one top hat bead right underneath it. Take the black wire and bend it in half. Twist that together for this rope look. Snip off a 1 inch piece and bend one end over so you have this L shape. Stick the shorter side to the back of the top hat bead. And then slip on a second top hat bead making sure to go over the black wire. This is optional but I added black nail polish to the bow wires to make the whole thing look like iron. Super cute. This can use two of these lights and we'll save the second one for later. Thread the bulb through the support post and glue it in place. Then position the poles on the right corner of the second floor. Poke the bow wire through the hole in the ceiling and then through the back wall. But while we're here, let's make an industrial light pendant for the living room. I take a sample perfume bottle and drill a hole through the lid for the bulb. I stream the bulb through it and glue it in place. You can see this entire process in detail in my miniature industrial pendant video. Add a V and then wrap some black wire around the bottle. Snip that off and cut across the wire to make these circles. Glue the ends closed and then slide them up around the bottle. Use super glue to hold the wire in place. Then take some thin 24 gauge wire, paint it black, and wrap it vertically around the bottle. Do this twice and you're done. I painted the bead black too for uniformity and then just string it through the ceiling. Pull these wires through the back wall too. The kit comes with this extra piece of flooring and these pretty white rails. They're meant to extend the first floor living room, but I won't be using them. 
I'll also create my own rail for the kitchen area. First though, let's make the living room furniture. These are the pieces you'll need for a single seat couch. You have the back, the seat, the legs, and the two armrests. Let's oppose with the armrests first. From back seat, take out this roll of fabric. We'll need this blue fabric and this felt for the couch. Using some no-sew fabric glue, glue one side of the armrest to the fabric. Cut that out and make a few cuts around the perimeter. Add some fabric glue and fold the sides over. Do the same for the other side. Alright, let's cover the center. Cut out a 3 inch by 1.5 inch rectangle. Fold over the long edges and iron it flat. Glue it to the bottom edge and wrap it all the way around the armrest. Trim off any excess fabric. Do this for the other armrest tail. For the seat cushion, glue the wooden block to the felt. Cut the excess felt off and then add a smaller piece of felt on top of it for extra fluffiness. Place this felt side down on the fabric and cut around it leaving an inch of fabric on each side. Cut the corners and fold the flaps in. Be patient here so you end up with a really neat product. For the back of the couch, cut out these images from the paper printout. Place them on the cardstock and cut them out. Next, cut out these two images from the white felt. Stack the small one on top of the bigger one and glue it to the top of the cardstock. Glue the felt side down more fabric and a poster using the same method as the armrest and the seat cushion. Glue that to the back piece. Attach the armrest with more glue. Oh, don't forget to cover that small rectangle cardstock piece of fabric as well. Add it to the front bottom. Now just slide the cushion in place. Attach the front legs and the back legs. How adorable is that? The two seat couch is made up of these pieces and uses the exact same method. Opposed to the armrest, the seats, and the back. Then attach the armrest, the front strip, and the cushions. There's this little gap between the cushions so I just added an extra piece of fabric underneath it to cover it. That's better. Then add the legs and the couch is complete. I love how this turned out. This little set is now ready to go into the dollhouse. I just placed them in the L shape in the living room. To complete the room, I cut out this image for the rug. Place that in front of the couches. To go on top of it, grab these pieces to make the coffee table. The only change I made was to paint the orange top brown. Once that's dry, this is very easy to assemble. Place that right on top of the rug. The last thing we need for this living room is the side table which is made up of these two parts. Glue them together and add a small piece of lace. For some flowers to go on top of it, take bag C and pick out the yellow flower, this white round bead, and this little string with bulbs. Take the bag with the greenery and pick out a few pieces. Fold the stringy piece in half and stick it through the round bead. Cut off the excess string. Then we need to cut the plastic green leaves from the stalk. Glue the leaves around the flower. Then place this whole bouquet into the white bead which acts as a base. I also added a little pink for extra color. This is so pretty. Now just glue it to the top of the side table and place it next to the couch. Don't forget to glue the lace down. Because the living room is now done, we can close it off. Take the large acrylic sheet and peel off the paper backing. Now just glue that to the open side of the living room. Now let's make the railings to close off the front of the living room. Take these white posts and paint them black. Take two coffee stirrers and stack them together for thickness. Paint this black as well. I made a bunch of these. Cut out three 3 inch lengths. Glue one to the bottom of the two rail posts, one to the center, and one to the top. Now just place this right in front of the living room. Also add a half rail to close the room off. This longer one is for the kitchen area. For the front stairs, first add a post to the bottom step. Then add two rails with the ends cut on the slant. The last accessory we need for the first floor is a little snack. Take these two metal beads and glue the bags together to form this tray. Take the little pink cane that has the swirly design inside of it. Cut out a bunch of thin little slices. They look just like pink swirl cake. Add some glue to the tray and place the little cake slices in. Then place this whole thing on the coffee table. While we're here, let's also put the music stand and the cello right outside the railing. 
Now let's get to work on the second floor, which houses the bedroom and a bathroom. You need these three pieces for the bed. The headboard can be upholstered, but I'm just going to paint it brown. Glue the big rectangle on as the bed base, and then add on the small rectangle as the front support. Take the white felt and cut out a piece the same size as the bed. For the bedding, I'm using these two fabrics. This mattress foam one, and this ruffle cream color one. Place the foam on the bed and tuck in the corners. Cut off the excess foam. Now I just place this in the bedroom right above the exposed wires on the floor. Then add on the bedding. I simply lay it on and push in the bottom edges. Brush on some fabric glue to secure the fabric in place. This will give it a very natural drapey look. For some pillows, take the shiny woven fabric and fold over a 1 inch strip on one end. Glue the edge down and cut off the remaining fabric. Cut that in half to make two pillows. I add some glue to one open end and press it closed. When that's dry, flip the pillowcase inside out. Take the batting from bag C and stuff your pillow with a little bit of it. Fold the seam inward and add some glue to close it up. This cute pillow is all done. Finish the other pillows so you have a set and add them to the bed. Next, let's create the nightstand with these six pieces. Glue the sides to the front blue piece and then add a top on. Glue on a two drawer front and it's done. Super simple nightstand. I paint this brown to match the bed. Place it right next to the bed on the right side. For the bedroom lighting, we're going to make two sconces with these two beautiful wooden designs. We also need this clear plastic tubing, two of these metal disc beads, and two light bulbs. Cut the tube in half and glue one half to a bead. Stick a bulb inside the plastic tube and then grab a top half shaped bead. Thread the wires through the bead to close up the bottom of the light fixture. Then just loop the intricate wooden piece over the wires and slip behind the light. And look how pretty that is. Make two of these and install them to the bedroom through the two holes above the bed. For the dresser, grab all these blue pieces. Just like for the nightstand, assembly involves attaching the side pieces, the top, and then the front paneling details. This blue is very pretty, but I'm going to paint this brown to match the rest of the bedroom. Place that on the left side of the bed. The kit comes with these wooden pieces for an ottoman, but I'm going to turn that into a simple trunk. First, assemble these four pieces into a rectangle shape. The ottoman doesn't have a bottom piece, so I just create a makeshift one using a jumbo popsicle stick. To make the lift functional, I just add on these miniature hinges. Apply E6000 glue and then place them on the back of the trunk. Now it opens and closes easily. Paint the trunk brown to match the bedroom. Then take a coffee stirrer and some gold metallic paint. Paint the stick gold and cut off a 2 inch length. Glue that to the top of the trunk and another one to the top front. Add some side pieces. And then I decided to apply this little crown from a nail art kit. It's super cute. Just place that in front of the bed. Last piece for the bedroom, an obligatory painting above the bed. Cut out one image and a frame. Also cut out a small rectangle of clear plastic to go over the picture. Add the frame on top of that and then glue the whole thing to some cardstock. Cut that out and attach it to the wall. I made another one here for the downstairs living room too. We're on the last room of the house guys, the bathroom. Take this pretty wall divider and one of the lights we made earlier. Add the light to the top of the wall using some glue. I also added some white paint to camouflage the wires. Then stick the wires to the hole in the back wall and pull it through. This left side area will be our bathroom. The bathroom accessories are all in this bag. There's a bathtub, a sink, and a toilet. Add a toilet right next to the wall divider. There is also this tiny rectangle which I'll glue above the toilet as a shelf. The sink is very cute and only needs a faucet. I made that by curving the plastic coated wire and snipping off a piece. Glue that to the back room of the sink. Position the sink right next to the stairwell opening. For above the sink, use this frame as a mirror. I painted gold and add some metallic silver paper to the back. Glue right above the sink. Last bathroom piece, the bathtub. And to make this blue bathtub a bit more modern, I'm going to remove the blue paint. Using acetone and a cotton swab, wipe the paint off. This actually comes off very easily. Paint the feet of the tub with gold. And add a tub right in front of the pool. The faucet for this bathtub is made up of these metal beads. Put these floral shaped ones together to create the shower head. Then these silver ones together to create the base. Curve one end of some plastic coated silver wire and snip off a 2 inch length. Add the straight end into the base and add a shower head to the curved end. Add that behind the bathtub. Accessorize with some flowers above the toilet and on the bathroom dresser to finish it off. 
This part is optional, but I just grabbed this included white fabric and folded it over with some fabric glue for a bath towel. Drip it over the bath tub and glue it down. Alright, time for some finishing details. Take the last acrylic sheet and peel off the backing. Add it to the opening in the bedroom. These sheets are great because they help prevent any dust settling inside your dollhouse. The roof pieces are dark blue on both sides, so let's paint over that. I'm going to cover the bottom side with white so it matches the bedroom and bathroom walls. Once that's dry, I add painter's tape to all the edges so we can paint the outside. I mix up some white, black, and silver paint to make the satin gray color. Paint that all over the top of the roof pieces. This is how the color looks when it's dry. Glue the two roof pieces together and add it to the top of the dollhouse. The windows in this kit are all white so I just covered them in black paint. Position the kitchen window in place so it sits flush against the wall. The roof windows just sit on top of the roof. Finish the second floor by painting the bare wood area with gray to match the rest of the house. Lastly, paint some more coffee stairs black and add them around the acrylic sheet on the first floor. This is optional. I just think it adds really nice detail to the practically invisible acrylic. Now that we're all done with the bill, it's time to light this baby up. Just connect all the positive gray wires together and all the negative white wires together. Make sure to cut any wires that are too long. To expose the actual wire, run your blade around the plastic and pull the plastic coating off. Twist all the exposed wire together. See how I have a gray bundle and a white bundle? Make sure those are kept separate. Do the same thing for the wires from the bottom hole. Then grab some more of the extension wire and cut out two lengths. Connect one to the white bundle and one to the gray bundle. Tape up any exposed wire and you're ready to connect it all to the power box. Connect the wire from the white bundle to red and the wire from the gray bundle to black. Flip the power switch on and watch the magic happen. This is such a beautiful kit and looks great even without making any changes. I just want to show you that you can absolutely take a mass produced kit and make it fit your own style. Thanks to Banggood.com for sending me this kit to review. I had a ton of fun putting it together. I love the fact that it comes with so many accessories. Unfortunately, this kit doesn't come with a car or dust cover show on the box, but those are available on their website. I did this project over the course of three weeks and it was great seeing everything come together. I love how this turned out. Can't wait to build another one. I really hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye.